Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. You're about to see my Allegro one minute overview and final thoughts. This is designed to see if this game warrants more of your time. If it does, just keep watching because then you'll see my full intro overview and final thoughts. However, if you don't want to be spoiled anything and you want to skip right to the full review, use the time index below in YouTube. The key Murder at Oakdale Club is a simultaneously played deduction game, Family Weight, where you're trying to find the three murders and who did each one, how do they do it, where do they do it, and how do they get away. Players will be simultaneously rummaging through cards and finding a card that's in the same case color. Maybe you get clues like, this person did not murder with the trophy, and that's something that will help you unlock things a little bit later once you know when this was used or when he murdered. Or maybe you get a car with DNA evidence and you're trying to match those up to see who has that strand and knowing that that person killed with that. Or maybe you find out that this suspect was right here at 1945, meaning they couldn't have killed someone here because it took them 15 minutes if this was done five minutes after they were there. So you're using deduction in all different ways in this game. And once you think you've figured it all out, you'll be able to put a key into that number and see if you were right, if it came through here, the yellow, or wrong if it didn't. And if more than one player got it right, whoever did it in the smallest amount of time is the winner. This game is a quick deduction game that packs a punch. Simultaneous play, perfect, keeps the game moving. You're to deciding which cards to take and when, depending on what you actually know and what's on the icons in the backs of those cards. Sometimes you're saving information for later, which then one new piece can unlock many other clues that you had one after another after another. Feels like combo engine building. It's amazing. You're using this cool map to determine interesting timing of things. You're looking using the DNA, all sorts of cool things. The first one finished doesn't always win. In fact, probably often doesn't win. Uh, there's different ways to get to the same answer. So there is a ton of replayability, even though there's only nine unique cases. Uh, it uses the best deduction aspects of a popular game called Awkward Guests, but takes out the fiddly, silly way to get that information. This is a much better game than that. This game has multiple games in this system. This is just one of them. There's two easier ones. It's fantastic. It might be a little lucky where you might get cards that you already know the information for, but all players might be getting these too. And some cards might not make sense to first time players, but over the, over, overall, this game is fantastic. If you like light deduction games, this is a huge winner and I got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're at the Oakdale Golf Club. But unfortunately there's been three different murders at three different times and we're trying to figure out who is the one that did it. Let me show you how this works. I'll see you on the other side. The key is a series of family weight deduction games. Now this one is called Murder at the Oakdale Club. It is a medium level. And what you're trying to do is there are three murders. One at 7.30, one at 8, and one at 8.15. And for each of those three murders, you're trying to figure out which person did it, how they did it, where it was, and what did they use for their getaway vehicle. And you're trying to be the one to most efficiently do this and solve all three murders the one who does it most efficiently is going to win, even though this is played simultaneously. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to pick one of these key colors. That's going to be the case for this game. And even though the, there's nine unique cases, each of them are still pretty heavily replayable, actually. We'll talk more about that later. So let's say, for example, we're playing the yellow case. There's plenty of cards on the game, and you dump them on the table just like this. This is how the rules say to do it. And you'll see different colors, and this means that this card... Uh, is a good piece of evidence for these cases of this color. Yellow is here, that's great. This one actually is not yellow, so we wouldn't even use this one, or you could just skip right past it, things like that. So, and this is going to tell you, okay, this is in my case, this tells you sort of what this is about, like the getaway car and the suspect, and how many points or sort of time it takes. Some of these are witness statements. They're either two points or four points. This is sort of like lab information. Now, you want to be able to do it with the least amount of points possible, so you're trying to get to the answer and get it correct using the least amount of information. Not necessarily cards, but again, this one costs me two points, this one costs me four. Whoever does it correctly and does it in the shortest amount of time is, uh, you know, by points value is going to be the winner. But it is real time. I might take this, I might look at it and do something, I might take another one, I might be looking around. All players are doing this simultaneously. So let's take a look at this card. 
Now, this one says this murder suspect did not flee with the green, the, the green golf cart. Now, that does us no good right now, but later on when we find that, that a certain murder was done at a certain time was a green golf cart, or maybe a murder at a certain time was done with you know, this suspect, we could say, well, it's not this golf cart or so on and so forth. So this will give us some information that we might be able to unlock a little bit later. Now let's say next we look at this card here, it's in the yellow case, it has to do with the murder weapon and the suspect, it's a lab, it's worth, four, it takes us four time essentially to do this. And this gives us some DNA information. So everyone gets a guide, each, each player gets one of these, and you're gonna look at these and you're gonna try to figure out who this is. So uh, you're gonna look for this and you're gonna see, okay, orange, yellow, green, red, yellow. So you'd go through and you'd try to see who does that match? You're gonna look at those, the, the DNA, and you're trying to figure out, well, where does this match on any of these? And actually it doesn't match to anyone. So I'd flip the card over and go, okay, well, what about this way? Yellow, red, green, yellow, orange. Well, look at this. Yellow, red, green, yellow, orange. This matches the DNA of this. Now, what this tells me is that this perpetrator used this to kill the person. So. When I find out that for sure it's him, I know the weapon's that. If I find out the weapon's that, well then I know it's him. And so on and so forth. Now this is all dry erase. So let's say on the second murder I find out it's not poison. Draw right on it. Well we know that this perpetrator is the one that used poison. So if it wasn't poison, then it was not this one. You're doing deduction like this. Now, each sort of section here, only one of each is there, and only one of them is used in each one. For example, if I know the poison's not here, I know it's here or here. If I found the poison, let's say it was here, then I also know it's him, but I also know that those weren't there, and I also know that that's not there, because there's only one of each, and each thing only shows up once in the whole entire game. And so that's like the basics of the deduction of the game. Now let me show you another type of clue. Like this one here says that she was seen here at 1945 or 745. Now here is right here on the map. Now the three murder spots were here, here, and here. And it also shows you how long it takes with the golf cart to get to these different areas. So for example, she was here at 745. Now if this one that takes 15 minutes to get there was done at 750, just five minutes later, we know she couldn't have done it because she had come over here and this is that. So a lot, sometimes you're using like deduction with time and maps and things like that. And there's a really cool aspect of the game. Now let's say I figured it out. I figured out all three times who did it, what they did it with, where it was and how they got away. And then we're gonna come up with a four digit code. The person, that is gonna be the first part of the digit and it shows all the different people in a different order. Now going left to right, always going one, then two, then three, and looking at the three, we have him, then him, then her. And so here we have him, then him, then her. That's only there once, and that is a number of one. So I would put that number right there. Now we would do the same for all the other things there. We'd come up with a four digit code. Now there's a board of game that gets kept in the box and no one can kind of look at it as they're doing things. And you come up with a four digit code, you're gonna take the key, in this case it's yellow, you're gonna put it through the, the code that you have, let's say Audra's 1543, we would put it there. I'm purposely not showing you the back of this board. And we see this and you know what, the yellow key came through the hole and it's not yellow, so that was not correct. But if the yellow key did come through the yellow spot right there, then we know that that's correct. Players are gonna check their answers. They're gonna wait till everyone's done to check the answer. And uh, whoever did it first gets to get rid of one of their number two cards. Unless of course, every card they had was a four, then they get rid of one of those. And then everyone that got it correctly will add up all the time, the number of points here. Whoever did it in the least amount is the winner. You know, if you watch my channel a lot, you know that I love deduction games. It's probably my favorite genre. But I don't play them as often as I like because not everybody likes deduction games and it's harder to get these types of games to the table. But when one comes around like this and is sort of family version, the arts sort of family-ish and, the, and the, the mechanisms are easy, everything's simultaneous, you can play it in about 20 minutes, makes it a lot easier to get to the table. I like that. This is a quick deduction game that packs a great punch. It moves very fast because of that awesome simultaneous play where players are looking for those piles of cards and they're trying to figure out which one to get, how much time they want to spend, what are the two things I'm looking for on this card? And it just goes so well. You're basically, I mean, you're all playing at the same time. Really great way to make all of this work. You're trying to decide which cards to take and when, because you know, do you, 
do I need to know about the suspect and the getaway? Ooh, I just found the getaway. Okay, I figured out the getaway in this one. I'll take one that has getaway and something else because maybe that will help me link to another piece of information. So it's actually a strategy as to like which card you take and when you take them. Sometimes you're saving information for later and you've got all these cards, you're like, I don't have one thing marked up, but I've got five cards of stuff. And like, all it takes sometimes is one thing to click that unlocks this, that unlocks this, that unlocks this. You're like, oh, all this information I've been sitting on, now has all been linked together because I found the one piece of information to help me get there. And I love that. It's almost like a little combo building thing where it's like, I did this and it unlocked all these things from the earlier clues. I love the little map. So many different ways they use this in this game. Trying to calculate whether someone could have been there in time. Sometimes you're looking at watches and things covering watches and things that are broken. And there's, there's just so many interesting ways that they have come up with figuring out this, the, the little the puzzles in this. I like that it's not just a race. At first I read the rules, I'm like, oh, is it really everyone just like grabbing cards and doing stuff? No, because one, it doesn't matter who does it first, it can help you, but it doesn't really matter because number one, if you go too fast, you might not get it right. Number two, only if you get it right does it matter how fast or not even fast, but how efficient you did it. So the first one doesn't always win. Um, I like that there's different ways to get to the same answer. We might all get it correctly, but we all have different cards, which means we use different logic with different puzzles, depending on which cards we had to all come to the same answer. And that's why this game has a lot of replayability. Some people might go, it's a deduction game. Once you know the four digit code for red, you'll never play it again. Wrong. Actually, you will, because there's nine cases, and if every if you play each one of them in succession, by the time you come back to that ninth one, you're not going to remember the four-digit code. Even if you do have a photographic memory, and you remember that four-digit code, it's not like you can just start the game and write it. You actually, after you play the game, and you're playing a case for the, the second time along, you need to actually go through your cards and prove that this is the answer, this is how I got here, if someone feels like you just wrote the answer down. It's against the spirit of the game anyways. I've played cases multiple times. I didn't remember the numbers. And even if you do, it doesn't really matter because you actually need to have the cards that prove that from those cards you could deduce what was there. So this game actually has a lot of replayability. Now this is one of three that are out. This one's medium because you need to get four things. There's two games out in this series called The Key. Uh, one about a llama and one about a cliff that are easy and you only have to find out three things. So if you want something even easier, try those ones. This is medium. Next year, they're supposed to be coming out with hard. I imagine there's gotta be five things you gotta figure out. Now a game came out recently, well, in the last few years, called Awkward Guests. And people are going crazy about how great this deduction game is. I didn't like that game. I liked the deductive aspect, but I hated the mechanism of how you get the cards in that game. It was all just about like trading cards. I'm gonna auction off cards. I'm gonna, I wanna auction two. Okay, I'll give you some two. You end up getting back the same cards you've already seen. You end up, it's just, that mechanism was so lame compared to the rest of the game that I got rid of the game. I liked the deductive aspect, but I didn't like the way that you got information. This uses the best part of Awkward Guess, which was the way that the deduction works is very different. I'm looking at DNA. I'm looking at a map. I'm looking, could they have been here? I'm looking at all these interesting ways to think of deduction, different, unique ways, and putting them together with a much more streamlined, find a card, look for the ones you're looking for, and just get it. It like cut to the chase of what Awkward Guest was trying to be. And when the hard one comes out, I'm sure they're gonna be just as hard as Awkward Guest was. These ones are probably about as hard as sort of like the, the level two and three of the of Awkward Guests. Um, so that's pretty much, I, I, I really love this game. On the negative side of things, there are times where you're going to get cards and you think you're going to get something you need and you're like, oh, I already needed that. I just wasted two minutes or four minutes if I went to the lab. So sometimes you're just gonna, some luck. I mean, it's, it's a family weight game. It's not all strategy. There is some luck there. You might be a little bit unlucky and get a couple of cards that you already knew the answers to, but chances are other players are going to get that too. So in the end, I think it's not that big of a deal. Also, some of the cards might not quite make sense to a new player first time. Like you might get a card that has a watch on it and maybe like a blood smear on the watch. And it's not graphic or gruesome. It's just like, it's just like red over it. And you might not know what that even means. And once you understand what it means, like, oh, I get it. But you can't just ask somebody in the middle of the game that's playing because now they know the answer to that, right? So that's a negative too. But overall, this is just amazing. In fact, this system is so cool it was designed by the same person who came up with The Crew, one of the most popular games in the last couple of years, the trick-taking game, uh, Mr. Singh. I mean, just, it's amazing what this guy's done. It's created an amazing system with The Crew, and now The Crew Mission Deep Sea, second version of that that came out this year. It's amazing. And he comes out with this? 
This guy's a designer to be watching because he is a rising star. Because of all these reasons, it is staying on my gaming library, which means it's getting a saxophone serenade. My highest honor has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, and helping you find the next one you'll love. Hit it. <laughs>